try to connect it to the political events that were to happen, try to connect it. Now, immediately after that, I say, what happened in 1976 in Poland, you had a, a huge wave of strikes. For the first time, okay, we'll, we'll go a little bit here, as I do with my students, a little bit into chronology. 68, you have a major uprising among students in Poland. One of the leaders, Adam Michnik, they are arrested. Before they're being arrested, the police violates the campus's autonomy at the University of Warsaw. The students are beaten, they are arrested. It's in March 1968. Before being all jailed, some of them tried to mobilize the workers. The workers didn't do anything, actually. They applauded the government actions against the students. December 1970, a worker strikes in the coast uh, Baltic Baltic Sea coast, um, whatever, sh shipyards, uh, over 100 uh, workers are uh, shot dead by the government uh, army. Uh, there are no students and intellectuals to protest. They are in jail or they are intimidated. A lesson is to be drawn from that. You have to bring together students, intellectuals and workers. Okay, this happens after the, wor the workers' strikes of 1976, something extraordinarily important which was engineered by people like Michnik and Kuron that I mentioned before and a few others, uh, including Tadeusz Mazowiecki, who would be the first prime minister after the end of communism or during the end of communism. Uh, okay, they created KOR, which means uh, in translation the Committee for Workers' Defense. Uh, this was the key element that allowed at the moment when a new wave of strike starts in uh, July, August 1980. Now there are people to help the workers, to speak with, not for the workers, because the workers can speak for themselves, but to speak with the workers, help the workers articulate uh, their spontaneous needs and bring together in a way uh, the intellectual organization and the workers uh, activism and create a uh, truly Promethean and daunting um, alternative to the party state.